to a certain level of output. That's when I start. I have this K and this L employed. So let's take the case I was doing, right? So total L is here. That's the maximum L. Right? At the beginning, I just employ that. If there is growth, next period, they, out of the output, Y1, they have accumulated more capital, okay? And so there is more capital, and we get to employ also more labor. Notice, actually, that in this story, it's very interesting. If I make the story in this form, that I want to be realistic, right? And so I start that not all labor is fully employed, right? It might be, it might be, that after I start here with this capital labor ratio, right? If labor is very cheap, next period I actually go here. With a lower capital labor ratio, right? This is all a matter of what the relative prices are that maximize profit. What people find more convenient. There's nothing. There's no obligation to go one way or another. Right? So I may start growing and go here, so I employ a lot of worker, and then maybe here, more capital again, and so the capital labor ratio kind of at that point stay kind of constant. And then I grow a lot and I go here, so capital labor ratio actually decrease, right? And I keep doing, you see, I have more capital every time. It's just here it grows fast, then it grows slowly, right? That will depend on incentive, discounting, marginal theory of consumption, right? People are going to choose. Eventually, step by step, so maybe I have a big jump, I go here, right? So now the capital labor ratio is increased. Oops, sir. And it's kind of a raise back. But eventually, I'm going to hit here, some ISO point here. At that point, if I want to keep growing, if it is convenient growing, right? And it may, under our assumption it is, because the marginal productivity of capital is high enough to compensate saving, right? This economy has to move from this isoquant to some other isoquant, but along the red line. It cannot go anywhere else. You know, in the language of von Neumann or Mackenzie, you know, you're going to a facet. You know, you're on a you're on an outer boundary of the set. Right? Think of the, now, think of this thing in high dimension. At the beginning, every factor could accumulate. So you were moving in dimension n. Now, three of the factors, just to make more general, have reached maximum. Now you can only, you, you're restricted to an hyperplane of dimension n minus 3. Actually, into a set of dimension n minus 3. Eventually, may become an hyperplane. But forget hyperplane. That's wrong. You know, you just can grow along an n minus three thing because the other one pshoo, cut off, right? There is a, a plane of that, that that's an hyperplane or dimension three that has chopped off a piece of your cone and says, no, you gotta stay on me. You gotta travel on me. Okay? That's what we're doing. Here is dimension one, we travel along this. And at that point, at that point there is no way out, right? The growth path has to increase the capital. And that's what I'm saying. Now, in the story with fixed technological progress, there, sorry, we know technological progress, fixed technology, this happens magically. Same technology, but capital is such a good substitute for labor that we keep seeing higher and higher and higher and higher and higher capital labor intensity. Does it happen out there? Not really. Right? Not really, because the thing we now call labor is actually a very reproducible factor. Raw labor is almost useless. Right? What we're using is various forms of capital, physical and non-physical, and human capital in particular. That has increased enormously. It's all reproducible. And raw labor has become less and less relevant. So as land. So my observation there is, well, okay, in theory, in theory, this happens without technological progress. But when I look out there, I think this is the way technological progress works. 
Okay? I can write an, a model that says, no technological progress, still you have that. That's easy. Footnote six or so, right? But I, I think he himself was aware of that. But if you read, the guy has written very interesting, you should read pretty much everything him and, my, and those guys have written in the late 50s, early 60s. It's very insightful. Uh, they were quite aware of what they were trying to do. And they stopped at certain point, but you know, they had the problem much clearer, I think, that the, the so-called new growth theorists had. And they're much more useful today than, than some of the, to understand what's going on. More questions? Yes, when we are on the right side, and uh, when we employ full labor, mm -hmm. you said we're just going to go up on this line, on higher this other one. That's okay, but how do you know that maybe you're not going to, in later stage, decrease labor and increase capital and still be on the higher either point? Why should, for example... Oh, it's just what, a model. What do you, oh, okay. <laughs> what do you Remember, think? this is a model. Models have to be taken literally. The model makes that assumption. You know, you full employment of labor, you just keep going. Sure, you know, you can introduce a thing that says, oh, you know, labor becomes expensive so much that you actually want to use less. Absolutely. Okay, at that point, uh, basically it's like you restrict supply, and at that point you will be reaching over there. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh... So remember, you know, models have to be taken very seriously once you have clear what. Models are just a way of thinking logically and looking at the consequences of your, of your opinions about the world. They are not the truth, that is not, forget about truth, it doesn't exist, but, but they're not even a description of the world. They are, they, they are artificial words you build to get your reasoning right. Okay? And, and then they, they are always false, they're always wrong, always, by definition. There's only one model that is not wrong. It's the one-to-one -one model, but it's not very useful. You know, the one-to-one -one model requires a planet Earth living there in the parallel universe. You know, so every model is wrong, including Einstein. Right? Um, so they have to be used with a bit of, uh, of care. All right. So, okay. Please do read. It's not going to be very useful, my teaching, without you reading. Okay? It's a joint production. <laughs>